YouTube. I got a pile of stuff to get through because I just got a whole bunch of other stuff that I really want to get to. Um, some great finds, but that's going to be a whole different thing. Um, I had a pile here building up from last time that I didn't finish, and I wanted to sort of get through that and uh, keep you up to date for what it matters. On the stereo, f on the hi-fi front, um, stereo, we used to call it our stereo, so I'll call it stereo. On the stereo front, um, last time I'd got speaker cables, um, the Audio Quest Rocket 33, and this time I got two new power cords, um, one for the uh, Krell amp. And one for the Manly Chinook preamp. Um, I don't. I'm not going to remember the model numbers. They're Pangea. Um, the brand is Pangea or Pangea, whatever you call it. I think it's Pangea. Um, in the realm of about 200 bucks a piece. Um, so you can figure out which ones they are. One's a high current. One's a regular, low current. Um, obviously, the high current for the amp. Um, and what do I think after making all these changes? Um, you know, I listen very carefully to some stuff with the power cords, especially back and forth. Um, the speaker cables, I didn't really swap out back and forth because it's too much of a pain in the neck, so I wasn't going to do it. Um, but the power cords I did. And, you know, with the, I tried it with the amp first. And... You know, one of the things I noticed was was on one recording, slightly less honkiness to a horn on a saxophone recording. Um, these are all very subtle things, but after going back and forth, that was something that I definitely noticed. And when I did played around with the preamp power chords back and forth, um, I think you know I was hearing. A certain liveliness which turns out I think to be something a little bit more revealing um, of you know atmosphere of room whatever you want to call it uh, maybe this is for from reduction of low-level noise you'd hope that's what it's from um, the cumulative effect of all these things though I have to say has been pretty I mean, it's, I'll say pretty amazing to the extent that everything was sounding really great before. Don't get me wrong. I was really happy with the new speakers and the way things were. Regular power cords, homemade cable. Everything was sounding great. I do think this has etched it up ever so slightly to just another, say another level, but... but um, it's so revealing at this point. You know, I was I listened I put on a quartet recording and I sat there and I just heard every squeak of every chair, every movement, everything that was there, um, which you know I certainly hadn't noticed in the same way before. Now this could be all in my mind. I'll tell you it's very it's still very subtle. Um, especially A being it. Um, these differences are very, very subtle. So I'm, you know, I'm going to fall into the camp of cables make a difference. Even power cables make a difference. Um, can improve things, but on, really on the margins. Really on the margins. And it's the last thing that you should be concerned about. Um, but when you've taken care of everything else, which I think I had at this point, um, then absolutely feel free to experiment and um, check it out yourself. I, I feel the benefits have been positive for the money spent. And it was not a small investment between all the cords. So that's something to think of too. But again, I now I've got a system that you know, there's a decent amount of money in um, some of it used, some of it new. 
but you know, retail speaking is a lot of money invested in the system, and um, you know, I think it deserved the, the chance for a decent investment in courts, not not a ridiculous investment, but but um, you know, a decent investment. So that's where I stand on that. What do I got here? Quick. Um, not too big on Neil Diamond's albums. As albums, I like his greatest hits. Uh, this I had one listen to. It's very good. This is the one produced by Robbie Robertson, and uh, I don't know the history, but presumably this is what got him in the last waltz. If you're ever wondering, like I was, what the hell Neil Diamond was doing there, this is why. Um, Dry your eyes from that album is on this, which is a great song, and uh, beautiful noise. And um, if you know what I mean, those are the sort of like the hits. Um, but the other stuff is pretty good too. I guess it's something of a concept album about Tin Pan Alley. I haven't really followed the through line in that, but you know, so far so good. This was actually given to me. Um, and yeah, it's really cool. Uh, as far as the small Spalding, you probably know this. Um, if you're sort of into modern, I guess, jazz. Um, this is really interesting. Um, it's a nice sounding record. It's not fabulous sounding, but it's good, very good um, for a modern recording. Um, Tony Visconti, I guess, helped produce this. Her um, and really interesting, just different. Uh, for me, it was just very different and uh, taking a jazzy thing, almost like. I'm going to pull out another record here. I'll tell you what it's what it reminded me of. It reminded me of this, which is another one I got. Um, this is Joni Mitchell, of course, The Hissing of Summer Lawns, uh, where she started to get more jazzy um, and experimental. And they're both interesting in that way. Um, I don't know if anybody's made that connection, but to me, I bought them, got them around the same time, and they reminded me of of each other so I'll put that on the pile too I like it I don't you know maybe not quite as much yet as the earlier stuff but I like it and speaking of Joni Mitchell while we're on the subject this one is very 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 good um, this is uh, for the roses sort of like uh, not early early this is from 72 but you know sort of I guess you could say transitional or not quite transitional um, you might know a couple things off this but this, this is a beautiful sounding record and you know you turn me on on my radio it's on here um, and I like it a lot this one's fun Nancy uh, Sinatra and Lee Hazelwood of course um, it's got Jackson it's got uh, some Velvet Morning um, and just a great and Greenwich, Greenwich Greenwich Village folk song salesman, another popular song. Um, just the goofiest kind of '60s, but neat, interesting. It's just interesting, like an interesting take uh, at that time on '60s pop. Um, and the, the, this is this is one to have. Um, haven't got too far into this yet. Dreamy, Tangerine Dream. Um, maybe not too surprising. Um, Rubicon on uh, Virgin. And I um, can't remember if this is a UK pressing or not. Um, may not be. Yep, made in England. Um, so, if you like the dreamy stuff, and I mean just a real, where not much happens, but it's kind of a cool mood, that's one for you. You got this. You know, this isn't a style that I particularly love, even though I'm a huge punk fan of classic punk. This is um, glam. I like some glam stuff. Um, but it had Ballroom Blitz on it, and uh, Fox on the Run. I love both those songs. So... Um, yeah, seems like fun. I only listened to side one, so I can't really tell you too much about it. But 
and I, again, not my not something that I would be reaching for all the time, um, especially just sort of sitting here listening. Um, but so far, so good. Um, you know, this is sort of like one of those things that's probably hard to defend. I have a kind of soft spot for John Evangelis, John Anderson Evangelis. And um, I love the song One More Time. It's one of my favorites off their greatest hits. It's on this album originally as a short stories. Um, you know, hard to recommend, hard to say it's great. But if you like these guys separately, you're probably going to like them together like I do. And I can't really explain my enjoyment of it. So I would just say, you know, you're a Yes fan. Um, and you like the sort of softer side of Yes as well as the harder side. And you like Vangelis, especially during that 70s and early 80s period. Um, he did a lot of great stuff. So those the, the, their albums are, are good from that point of view. They're not great, but they're good. Um... Interesting one. David Allen from Gong. Now is the happiest time of your life. <clears throat> I just put this on. Again, didn't get too deep into it. I got so much stuff recently. It's ridiculous. Um, so I haven't been even been able to listen as deeply as I'd like. But this is just crazy. As everything apparently David Allen did. I have some Gong records. It's just all nuts. And this is just as nuts on the kind of like um, solo-er, acoustic side from what I've heard. Um, I don't even know how you describe it. I really wouldn't know, you know, you know, uh, Sid Barrett, um, maybe, you know, uh, on a good day. When I mean on a good day, I mean on a happy day. Um, I don't mean it's sort of better than Sid Barrett or something like that, but, but, um, you know, Sid Barrett in a whimsical mood. Uh, <laughs> might get you as close, but not really. It's just so crazy all over the place. You think of like Van Dyke Park's song cycle and that kind of mood, you might get close to it. Um, again, hard to know what to make of it because it's hard to really sink your teeth into some of this stuff. But sometimes you just like putting it on and just go like, what the hell? And that's something in and of itself. Uh, up, Donald Bird. Um, it's pretty decent. It's got Han Herbie Hancock on and Kenny Burrell. Um, so I picked it up. Um, some vocal stuff on here, which is a little bit kind of 60s in, in not the most positive way for me. Um, but some good stuff on it. It's not a classic jazz record, I think, but, but decent. Um, this was just, I was just listening to it. You all know it, right? Um, so I can't really, you know, I don't want to go, I didn't really plan to get too far. I, I pulled out a couple Steve Ray Vaughan albums to listen to. That's why they're in this pile. I don't really have any reason to talk about them right now, other than the fact that I love Steve Ray Vaughan. Another Joni Mitchell album, this is Clouds, which has got, a, um, several great songs on, like Chelsea Morning and Clouds. And I'm trying to think what other hit why both sides now obviously that's clouds. Um, this is actually called both sides now, but this is this is mm, this is her first album I don't know but it's early, and uh, if you like her you're gonna like that. Another one of the XTC pickups, the Great Fire, twelve inch. These are Brit British. Um, I picked these up mainly to try to get the B-sides on vinyl from the Mummer album, like Gold and Toys. Let's see, I think if I have another one here. But um, those are ones I tried to uh, was trying to get, um, too. That's why I picked these up. Here's another one. This is Senses Working Overtime. This isn't from the Mummer album, obviously. It's English Settlement, but, um, you know... Their B-sides are so interesting, and each one of these has four songs on it. Three otherwise unreleased on vinyl, so um, guaranteed to be interesting or great, depending on your perspective. I love XTC, as we've talked about in the past. 
Um, I don't get too far into this, so I can't really talk about it. Resurrection of Pig Boy Crabshaw. First of all, you gotta love a title like that. Second of all, you gotta love a cover like that. It can't be bad. Um, again, I'm not a blues rock person. Um, I believe this is early. Pressing. Don't know how early. But, um, so, I'm not the expert. But, um, you know, this, this sort of seemed to have a, a pretty cool vibe to it. So, again, I haven't got too far into it. Um, yeah. What can you say about REO Speedwagon? I don't know. It's got Roll With The Changes on it. It's got Time For Me To Fly, both of which are great, great songs. This is, of course, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. Isn't that hilarious? Um, so roll that out um you know for aria speedwagon fans let's put it that way uh speaking of last waltz i got the last waltz uh, i never had this surprisingly this is one of the things always loved the movie um the music is great from it so kind of a what, what why did i not have this it's crazy but but this is great. It goes without saying. This is pretty neat. Chuck Berry on chess. Chuck Berry's greatest hits. Um, which which are what? Roll Over Beethoven, School Days, Rock and Roll Music, Too Much Monkey Business, Johnny Be Good, Oh Baby Doll, Nadine, Maybelline, Memphis, Sweet Little Sixteen, Thirty Days, Brown Eyed Handsome Man. Couple that should have been on here, but as a Starting point, not too shabby. And and sounds very nice for a, a mono record from the 50s. Um, Elo. Um, first album. This is the one I had to, was trying to buy when I actually accidentally bought the second album. Um, and this is better. Uh, so, um, glad I got it. What's that? 10.538 Overture is pretty great. That's sort of well-known off this song. But, uh, you know, the, the sort of seeds of what a yellow would become. Uh, again, with Roy Wood joining Jeff Lynne here. Or vice versa. However you want to look at it. Of course, eventually to become Jeff Lynne's band um, entirely. But, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely recommend it. All right, so that's that. And next time, I'm going to have some really, really cool stuff. So, until then, bye-bye.